Well, good day there. This is Joe Van Cleve. Today I'm going to talk about comparing two different uh, photographic processes that both use light sensitive black and white photo paper to make a negative image. But one is the conventional paper negative exposed in camera and then developed with paper or film developer. And the other method is exposed in camera but not chemically developed but it is exposed long enough to auto develop just due to the action of the light itself and this is called a lumen print. So I would like to compare two images taken today. Stay tuned. Well, I have been working with paper negatives for many years, several decades in fact. Uh, a lot of that in my early years was using pinhole cameras, but in these later years I have gotten to use paper negatives in glass lens cameras. And um, I've gotten quite fond of using paper negatives because for several reasons uh, it's much less expensive than sheet film for large format cameras. For instance, here is one of the paper negatives we're going to talk about today. It's easy to handle because you can handle it in red safe lights in your darkroom. It does not show dirt or dust on both sides of the media like transparent plastic based film will would, and you can much easier scan it or photograph it to make a digital file since it's simply a reflective medium, not a transparent medium. Those are some of the advantages of paper negatives that I see over sheet film. There are, of course, some disadvantages. Much less photographic speed. The ISO is much lower. It's not panchromatic. That is, it's not sensitive to the full spectrum of visible light like panchromatic sheet film would be. And probably the sharpness is not quite as uh, crisp as with film. And of course you cannot enlarge it or contact print it nearly as easily as you can with film. Film of course is more expensive. I've recently started uh, using a slightly different kind of photo paper. So I've been using Freestyle Photos house brand called Arista. And they have a resin coated grade 2 paper. So what that means is most of the common types of photo papers you might see on the market are multi-grade paper, which means that the uh, contrast of the image is dependent upon the color of the light uh, that strikes the paper. It's intended to be used in, the, in a dark room under an enlarger where you're using colored filters to control the image's contrast. But if you're using that kind of paper in an in-camera, as an in-camera type of film, you'll find that the color of daylight outside is going to activate the high contrast emulsion and you'll have really high con contrasty types of negatives. Whereas with graded paper, it is a fixed contrast, not nearly as sensitive to the color of the light. So I've been using grade 2 RC paper for years as a negative. Uh, what's new about this though, this is a semi-matte finish and I originally bought a pack of this paper because I wanted to experiment with the reversal processing of uh, this paper. So these, this is a nice surface finish for uh, one of a kind positive images. But today I'm using this semi-matte paper as a negative media and I have two sheets of it here. This image is been uh, exposed in a speed graphic camera with a Fujinon lens and it has uh, an ISO, I rated the paper at an ISO speed of about 8 and so this was something like a fifteenth of a second at f5.6. The scene involved, this is a garden trellis in the backyard. I have a little motorcycle sprocket chain hanging off of it the camera is focused sharply on the trellis and then in the background is sort of out of focus darker foliage and because it's a paper negative of course the dark tones represent the highlights like this wooden beam is, is going to be a highlight whereas the light tones represent uh, the shadows. Now you might notice there's a border around it that's paper white and then there's a faint grayish tone to the whole image. Well that faint grayish tone is pre-flashing. I've pre-flashed or pre-exposed the paper in the darkroom before loading it in the film holder so that my darkest shadow detail is above paper white. So I always have a little bit of shadow detail. So that's one of the things I've been doing. So this is a conventional paper negative. I developed it in Ilford Universal Paper Developer, a dilution of about 1 to 20. It was something like 200 milliliters of water with 
10 milliliters of concentrate. So it's a 1 to 20 dilution. And uh, about a minute and a half or two minutes, it developed up quite nicely. And I, know, I like it. The uh, highlights aren't totally blown. I have some shadow detail. Nice tones there. Okay. Now let's compare this to the lumen print. Well, some of you are probably thinking right now, what is a lumen print? I know you explained it in the introduction, but I still don't get it. Well, you might be aware that some people who like to use pinhole cameras will put a sheet of photo paper in a pinhole camera, set the camera outside somewhere where they have a view of the sun in the sky, and leave it there for months and months, maybe six months or longer. And what happens is, even though the image of the sun is very faint coming through the tiny pinhole, over a period of many, many days, weeks, and months, uh, the, there's enough light coming through that will auto-develop the silver halide. So auto-developing is a property of silver halides that if you give it enough light for a long enough time, the uh, action of the photons will actually begin to break apart some of the silver halide molecules and you'll actually start to get a slight change of color. Now here's an example. These are two different strips of photo paper. These are black and white photo paper. And I know this one is kind of pinkish purple, and this one's kind of blue. Uh, I didn't know that black and white photo paper came in colors, you might be thinking to yourself, because this here is pretty close to neutrally gray if my camera white balance has been set right. How come black and white photo paper can have color? Well, when you auto-develop the paper emulsion due to the action of light, it can change different colors based on uh, several things, the intensity of the light and also the pH of the paper or the pH of the environment. Now these two strips of paper have just been sitting in my darkroom and when I have the white lights turned on in the darkroom it is being fogged with uh, white light of course and you'll, you'll notice certain things like for instance this purplish negative. You'll see in the upper corner there there's a little dark rectangle. Well that's because uh, something was probably covering most of the paper except for that and it got more light maybe. Uh, you know these pieces of paper are all jumbled around in the dark room and they get uh, piled up one on top of the other. And so anyways this is auto developing. Now if I was to stick one of these pieces of paper in a paper developer it would immediately turn black because it's been so heavily overexposed it, it, as a normal photographic print. But uh, lumen prints uh, strictly develop due to the action of light. So if you put a sheet of photo paper in a camera and with a bright enough lens and a bright enough scene, you might be able to get a actual image on the paper. And so I exposed this same scene in uh, my speed graphic camera with a, another sheet of the same paper that was not pre-flashed, but it's the same grade 2 resin coated uh, semi-matte finish paper. I did two of them. There's several people that I am aware of that are doing lumen prints, and one of them, he's discovered that if you pre-wet the lumen print with water, it tends to accelerate the action of the auto developing. And also, if you change the pH of the water, either acidic or basic, it'll change the tone, either more pinkish or more bluish. And so I made two lumen prints today. So these are light sensitive. Now this was the first one that was dry, and you can see it's a very faint image. I'd have to hold it in the shadows almost for you to see it, right? And then the other one was wetted and put in the film holder wet. And so the difference between them, obviously the wet one got more exposure. Now these were both exposed for 20 minutes. 20 minutes on both of them. Now, I'm going to cover this up temporarily while I'm talking because these prints are still light sensitive. But I was curious to see what I could do with a lumen print if I scanned it. And I, if I treated it as a hybrid process. And what I mean by hybrid process is it is exposed in a camera, not developed, protected from the light, and then you put it on a flatbed scanner or you could photograph it with a, a digital camera setup and create a negative digital image. And then in post-processing, you can scan it, invert it, and create a uh, positive image that you can adjust the tones on. And so I've gone ahead and I have scanned this particular, the wet 
the one that was uh, exposed wet with water in the camera. And I've also scanned and processed uh, the standard conventional paper negative. Now, it may look to your eye that the conventional paper negative is going to be a much better image. And it is a better image, but surprisingly, the lumen print is pretty good uh, for what it looks like right here. And let's go ahead and take a look at those images, and uh, I'll talk about them. So first of all, this is the lumen print itself. Now, looking at it, you might notice that, first of all, the highlights are not too bad. You can see in the upper left corner, there's a little bit of light coming through the trellis. And along the middle of the print, there are some out of focus highlights from some tree leaves in the background. And those are pretty good. The uh, wooden post uh, right behind the gear and sp the sprocket and chain it looks pretty good. There's some good detail, upper mid tones. The main drawback, I think, to this image is the lower right quadrant, the shadows have some streakiness like banding in it, and that is an artifact of my scanner. And it is because the paper is virtually pure white at this point because there's no pre-flashing tone on this paper. And consequently, the uh, scanner has a problem with noise at that, at that high uh, level that when you invert the, the, the peak white paper into a dark shadow, it just gets this scanner noise. And it's an artifact of my scanner. If I was to photograph this with a high quality digital camera, it might be better, but it's surprisingly good of an image considering how faint the image appeared uh, on the uh, lumen negative itself. And so keep that in mind as we go to the, uh, the scan and, and the positive version of the paper negative. Okay, here is the positive version of the paper negative. It is essentially the same composition. Uh, the contrast is a little higher, as you can obviously tell from looking at the negative itself. Um, so the highlights have more detail in them. They are brighter. Some of that is an artifact of the processing, of the way I've adjusted the uh, tones. I didn't make any attempt to actually match the tones exactly between the two images. I just tried to make them as good as possible. But the, the real uh, thing you can tell here that's better is in the shadow details in the lower right quadrant. It doesn't have nearly the kind of banding and noise that the lumen print did. But other than that, the two images are surprisingly similar. And that is a kind of a remarkable observation, I think. Well, given the fact that both of these digital images are so remarkably similar, given how far different their respective negatives looked in person, it might beg the question of what is the advantage of one versus the other? Which uh, type of process should I pursue if I'm interested in creating these uh, light-sensitive uh, paper negative images? Well, let's go through and kind of compare uh, both processes and see maybe that might help us decide. First of all, conventional paper negatives that are exposed with the objective of being developed in chemical developer don't have to be exposed for nearly as long. In the comparison here, we had a 15th of a second versus 20 minutes. Even so, with that 20 minute exposure, it was much less of a contrasty image. The highlights weren't nearly as bright at, or as dark in the, in the negative as they were in the chemically developed negative image. So right there, the difference is it depends on your subject matter. For instance, um, I, I have done quite a few seated portraits using paper negatives and uh, you know, a 15th of a second, eighth of a second, those are f fine shutter speeds for a person seated in a position where they can hold still, but not 20 minutes. So you might not want to use lumen prints if you're doing portraits of people, or if you're doing some kind of secluded areas like shaded daylight, which is just going to be much longer than 20 minutes and under these situations here, uh, you might want to use paper negatives uh, chemically developed. Uh, one of the other differences is in order to speed up the process, you're going to want to wet the lumen print out in the field. And so you're going to have to have a means of 
uh, opening up the film holder with the paper in it and brushing or spraying on a little bit of film of water to wet the, the paper or a little container to, to dip it in and then load it into the film holder wet. But on the other hand, the uh, light sensitive paper as a lumen print does not have to be protected from the light like you would a chemically developed negative because you're not going to chemically develop it. It takes many, many minutes for any kind of a tone to show up on a lumen print. So uh, another uh, difference would be um, if you were intending to contact print paper negatives. Now in, in the darkroom, you can successfully contact print a traditional paper negative like this uh, against another sheet of photo paper. You shine light through the back side of the paper and it creates a positive image. You really can't very well do that with a lumen print because the faint negative image is so low contrast and so faint. On the other hand, if you intend on scanning your lumen print, you'll find that you're going to probably have to do better than I did scanning the lumen prints because those shadow details that are so paper white appear to be very difficult to uh, get clean shadows without noise or banding if you have a, a poor or an old scanner like mine. Those are some of the differences right there. On the other hand, if you are a person who is not comfortable with working around either darkroom chemicals or you don't have a darkroom at all, well, lumen prints might actually be just your ticket. And if you think about this, this is a real interesting concept. You buy a, a sheet, uh, a box of photo paper, and under subdued lighting, you can trim, uh, like if you buy 8x10 sheets, you can trim them into four pieces, into 4x5 sheets, or whatever format you're using. And you don't need a dark room, you just need subdued lighting so you don't start a lumen exposure. Uh, and just keep the paper in this black envelope in its box, and then you don't need a dark room, any kind of dark room. You simply put the paper in the camera, pre-wet it with water if you want, and sit it out and let it do its thing. And then when it's done, you take it in, let it make sure it's dry, and then you can photograph or scan it. And it is an ideal medium for this hybrid process, a hybrid between light sensitive chemical photography and digital photography. So there are, I can see there are some advantages to the lumen process because it's so simple. If you don't have a dark room, don't want to buy the chemicals. It is pretty inexpensive. You don't need anything but just a, a way of getting the paper cut down to the right size and put in your camera. Um, I would suggest as far as the camera itself, with a lumen print, you're going to want as fast of an optic as possible. The fastest 4x5 lens that I'm aware of, a conventional lens with a shutter, is going to be something like uh, f4.7, I believe, is the uh, Kodak Ektar lens that came with the Speed Graphics back in World War II. My Fuji lens is a 5.6, is the fastest, but you're going to want to get down to f3 or f2-ish range to really get some decent speed out of these lumen prints, which means you might be using some non-standard optics, things that, like magnifying glasses, things that are actually faster photographically than a conventional large format camera lens, but they're going to have some optical aberrations. The off-axis part of the image might be blurry because it's a meniscus lens. I have a binocular lens, a 50 millimeter, about 6 inch focal length binocular lens. It's about f3, pretty quick, but it's pretty blurry at f3. Uh, so if you're interested in those kind of images that look kind of like a cross between a Holga camera and a pinhole camera image, that might be the thing for you. It is definitely a non-standard process, these lumen prints are. Which gets us to another point, is maybe you're attracted to lumen prints simply because of the novelty of it, the uniqueness of it. And I could certainly see that because I've been drawn to a lot of photographic processes and ideas over the years simply because of the novelty of it. Well, this is uh, just a few ideas for you comparing paper negatives chemically developed with lumen print negatives that are simply developed with the action of light itself. I hope this gives you guys some inspiration to go out and try doing some lumen prints. It's so simple. All you need is a fast lens like a magnifying glass in a box. That's it. 
put your paper in a little black envelope, take it out. You can even pull the paper out in the bright sun one sheet at a time, load it in the camera, because it's going to take quite a while for the sun to create a, a tonal change. The lumen print process is very intriguing, and I invite you guys to try it. But if you do have a dark room setup, a very simple dark room, a closet, bathroom, whatever, all you need is a couple trays, liquid developer, vinegar for stop bath, and fixer, and it is very easy to come up with a high quality paper negative like this. And I should mention that uh, this test today was almost purposefully intended to put the lumen prints at a disadvantage. And the reason why is because I have chosen to use grade two paper negatives for years in order to control the excessive contrast that often happens when you're using uh, paper media in bright sunny conditions. So it is intended to control the contrast range but for a lumen print you want as much contrast as possible. So if you were actually going to optimize the lumen print process you would probably not use grade 2 paper. You want to use multi-grade paper. You might want to go out and try to find a, a variety of multi-grade paper that is a little bit faster photographically than perhaps this Arista uh, brand is. So again, it wasn't an optimized test. It, it, it wasn't optimized for the lumen print itself. Yeah, if you want, if you're interested in lumen prints, I, I think uh, I would uh, use multi-grade paper. And this reminds me that I'm probably going to be doing a future video on the subject of optimizing lumen prints. And I'm going to try to find another kind of variety of paper in my uh, stash of papers and see if I can get more speed out of it. Well, okay, this is Joe Van Cleve. I hope this gives you some inspiring ideas for creative image making with light sensitive paper. And until next time, you guys have yourselves a great day.